so before I start the video, let's say hi to the little rainbow baby. <gasps> say hi everybody. Are you trying to say hi? <coughs> little cutie. Her hair is all crazy. She's got that dark hair. Say hi. Fourth time was a charm, huh, princess? Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah, you're right. Okay, say goodbye, everybody. Oh, she totally, like, waved. She probably didn't do it on purpose, but... And she's sticking her tongue out at you guys. <laughs> say bye, everybody. Hi, guys. Welcome back to my channel. This feels so weird sitting down filming. This is like the first time I've sat down and not done like a vlog style video for a month. Actually more than that, like before Penelope was born. Let's just say I have not been back on my game as fast as I thought I would. Um, I'll go more into that in the very next video that's going to be uploaded, which is probably going to be tomorrow. So anyways, today actually Penelope is exactly four weeks old. <laughs> I'm so sad. I should say today at the time of filming this. So today is March 18th, I think, that I'm filming this. For those of my subscribers who've been watching me, you'll kind of see that my videos have kind of been all over the place and you'll know why. You'll know that, you know, I tried to pre-film a bunch of videos before I had her just in case I didn't feel like filming, which I'm glad because literally I've had her four weeks ago and this is the first time I'm sitting down filming a video for you. Which again, I'll go more into all of that in the next video. So this video is going to be my birth story. And then the video that goes up tomorrow is going to be Penelope and I's one month update. So I'm just going to talk about like me. I'm going to show you guys what my body looks like right now. And we're going to talk about Penelope. And we're going to show you Penelope. Jessie just got home from work. So she's hanging out with daddy. And this is also the first time I've put on a full face of makeup since having her too. So if you're watching this and I've just had a baby and are like, oh my God, it's been, you know, a couple days or a couple weeks and I haven't put on makeup. Like, don't feel bad. It's been four weeks and I finally put on makeup and it took me all day to put on. Anyways, let's get into my birth story. So four weeks ago today, I had my little baby girl, Penelope Max, and I do have a birth vlog where I kind of just, I literally vlogged the entire process and everything. I'll leave a link for it up here and down below so you guys can go watch that if you want to. But my birthing experience was so positive, so relaxed, so exciting. I, I just, I got really lucky and happened to have an amazing experience. Basically, I had an induced labor. I did tap out and get the epidural. It worked, everything went so smoothly. So yeah, I'm just gonna kind of give you a little more background and tell you how it happened. Her due date was actually March 22nd, which was a Friday. And she was actually born on that Thursday, a day before March 21st, which happened to be Jesse, Jesse's my husband. Um, it happened to be our four year anniversary, which was so freaking cool. Like, I don't know I just it was just the best anniversary gift we could have ever had obviously so that Monday I had gone in for an appointment and actually let's go back to the Thursday before so a week before she was born I was going in at this point every Monday and Thursday to my normal OB because I had gestational diabetes and they started doing uh, NSTs non-stress tests I think when I was at 32 weeks so I would go in twice a week and they would monitor her heart rate and activity level and just check to make sure she was doing okay. And then we found out at about 35 weeks that she had dropped in her growth and her stomach was below the three percentile. So they got really worried. If you wanna know more details on that, I'll link my playlist of my pregnancy. I have a what's in my hospital bag. I have a video on the gestational diabetes. I have the updates on her growth and everything like that. Cause if I recap that, it would just be way too long of a video, which 
my videos normally are really long anyways but anyways i'll link that down below if you want to catch up so basically at this point i had doctor's appointments three times a week and so back to that thursday i had gone in for my normal appointment and my doctor checked my cervix i think it was that thursday was it thursday or monday oh now i don't remember i wish i had filmed this video like right after i had her like i wish i could have mustered up the motivation to do it because i've forgotten so many things but anyways the week before they had checked me and my cervix was completely closed and so my doctor basically told me to go for walks have a lot of sex and nipple stimulation because all those things are known to help you go into labor so we did that and by monday she checked me and my cervix was open but i was only at about one centimeter and i have to say before that like i would say a like about a week and a half before she was born i started having um what felt like contractions in the middle of the night i would wake up and they could have been braxton hicks but i hadn't had those Braxton Hicks contractions anytime throughout my pregnancy up until like that last week and a half. So I don't know what was going on there, but I would wake up and I would feel like crampy, like period crampy and it would like go away and then it would come back and then I would fall asleep and then by the time I'd wake up in the morning, they'd be gone. So at Monday's appointment, my doctor was like, well, we don't really want her going past her due date just because the more time that passes after the due date, the more chances for complications could arise. And I had already had some little hiccups along the way. So they were like, we want this baby out safe and sound. She's big enough to come out. So let's induce you. The original plan was to have me come in Thursday morning early I think at 7 in the morning that's when they were gonna start me on the induction medication but she did go ahead and schedule me an appointment for Wednesday the day before and she said she wanted to check me one more time and if I hadn't gotten to two centimeters by Wednesday then they actually wanted me to come in the night before so that Wednesday and at that appointment I did end up only being about one and a half centimeters so just to be on the safe side they were like all right you're coming in tonight to have your baby that was really really exciting and I will say guys so obviously in my mind I wanted to have a normal non-induced delivery I wanted to experience waking up in the middle of the night or being out in public somewhere and saying oh my gosh my water broke and I wanted that excitement and I just wanted my body to do things naturally I really wanted to try to not get an epidural and just see what my body can do and just experience the whole thing completely naturally. And one thing I have to say is just, that's not how life goes. You don't always get what you want, how you want it. And that doesn't mean it can't be amazing because if you watch my birth vlog, literally i could not have pictured a more perfect birth i'm i'm so glad it happened the way it did it was so exciting to actually be induced and to know oh my gosh we're having a baby we're gonna leave to go have a baby so i will say that no matter how your birth ends up just kind of go in with an open mind and just tell yourself you know what it's going to be exciting either way even if you end up having to have a c-section that's one thing another thing i really didn't want is i was like oh my gosh i really don't want to have a c-section which i didn't but by the time i got to the hospital i told myself you know what i'm just going to trust my doctors trust the nurses and however i meant to birth this baby is going to happen and I'm not gonna fight it. I'm gonna find the good in any situation. So that really helped my experience, I have to say. So that Wednesday, I was so excited. Actually that Monday when they were like, we're gonna induce you. I was like, what? I was so excited. And before that point, I was really, really not looking forward to giving birth. I was looking forward to meeting her, but I just, I wanted to keep her in my belly for forever. But once I heard, oh my gosh, you're gonna have a baby at the end of this week, I don't know, that kind of all went away and I was excited. And it's funny, it was kind of the opposite for Jesse. He was not anxious or anything until I was like, we're for sure having a baby the end of this week. He was like, oh my God, what? And Wednesday, he was a little anxious too. So it's just funny, like we kind of flip-flopped. But anyways, Wednesday, I we cleaned the house got everything ready we went and got Olive Garden takeout as my last meal because they did say once I got to the hospital I wouldn't be able to eat so I had Olive Garden chicken alfredo for my last meal and we left and went to the hospital and the whole process was just so exciting it felt like 
going to Disneyland. That sounds so weird, but that feeling you get, oh my gosh, we're going tomorrow, oh my gosh, we're leaving tonight, that's the feeling I had. And that's kind of how I just went in. The whole thing is, I'm gonna look at this like a vacation. This is something happy and exciting. And if you watched my What's in My Hospital bag, I kind of talked about that. I went and bought myself some, some nice things to have with me in the hospital and to wear. It was exciting. We got there, we got checked in, and it's funny, I did tell the nurse that. I was like, oh, I just, I feel like I'm on vacation. And she's like, oh, it won't be like this for long. And I was like, I know. And anyway, so basically they started me on Cytotech kind of right when we got there, which is a cervix softener. One thing I didn't really understand is I thought the cervix softener, I knew, you know, obviously it's supposed to soften your cervix, but I didn't know the goal with Cytotech is to make the cervix shorter, not necessarily to dilate. So that'll come into play in a second. I wish I had known that going in. And maybe she did tell me and I just was too excited to digest it, who knows. But basically it was in the form of a drink and she would give me a little shot of it every two hours and they had me hooked up to a heart monitor to monitor her heart make sure she's doing okay they had put an iv in they hadn't hooked anything up to it yet but they got the iv in that way when they were going to start the pitocin which the plan was to start the pitocin the next morning and so basically what from what she said is that cytotech doesn't necessarily put you into labor that most of the time it doesn't but it can trigger labor and that's what it ended up doing for me so i think after about the second dose she asked me she's like are you feeling a little something and i was like um maybe i guess now that you asked me i guess i kind of am feeling very light period cramp. She goes, okay. She's like, I'm just making sure because the machine says you're having contractions. And if you saw my labor and delivery vlog, you'll see at this time, just now we're walking around the hallway. That's what they said. If you can try to walk and squat around. I had a 45 minute window. I don't know why it was just kind of weird. So every two hours I had a 45 minute window where I could get unhooked from all the monitors and go walk around. So we were doing that. And yeah, basically I started having contractions and they got a little stronger. They got to the point where they were kind of, you know, solid period cramps and then by about i think it was 12 they started getting way stronger and to the point where i had to get up and walking around helped a lot like pacing you would have seen that in my in the video but that helped get through breathing obviously i tried bouncing on the ball so that kind of helped a lot but what sucked is i only had 45 minutes to be up and then for an hour and 15 minutes i had to be laying down in bed strapped up to the monitors so by i would say about one o'clock i was in bad bad pain i was like oh my god this is bad when you're not having contraction it doesn't hurt at all you don't feel anything it's great but when you have a contraction it starts off slow and you know it's coming and then it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse and worse and then it gets to a peak and then it starts going down now one thing with the drugs that induce labor is it makes your body do things unnaturally and so there was a point where i was having contractions almost every 20 seconds it was crazy where i couldn't really get a break you know and you really need that break in between the contractions just to kind of mentally gather yourself so i wish i had pulled out the camera at this point but obviously that was the last thing on my mind but it did get to a point where i was like oh and jesse was telling me to breathe and i was like and it even got to a point where I started crying a little bit. I was just like, this is awful. And I was just like, this hurts so bad. And I think at about five or six, the nurse came and she checked me again. And at that point she was like, you're two centimeters. So that's when I really kind of lost it. And I just, my will and motivation went out the window. Cause I was like, all this pain I've been in for hours, has only gotten me to two centimeters. And that's where I wish I would have known that the goal wasn't to dilate, that the goal was to have my cervix shorten, which it was a lot shortened. I think they call it a face and they didn't tell me, or at least I don't remember what percentage they were saying, anything like that. But basically I started crying. I was just like, 
and that's when I was like I want the epidural if it took five hours to get one centimeter like I can't I didn't want to be in that pain for however long it was gonna take and so I was really I was actually pretty scared I was like oh my gosh this, there's a big needle what do I do if I'm having a contraction like how am I gonna stay still because you have to stay really still and you basically have to she kind of described it as like a cat arching its back but you're like hunched over and honestly the epidural was fine I was scared but I was just like you know what I just gotta breathe through it. and I did get a couple contractions while I was getting the epidural and I did I just like focused really hard on breathing and staying still and it was fine it really did didn't hurt at all at least I don't remember it hurting I remember feeling it like I could feel it and you know I'm definitely like oh that that's a needle more so the numbing part when they were putting the actual epidural in all I felt was it was really weird and I said this out loud but I was like it feels like I'm getting shocked like it felt like there was like a shock going through my back it was really really weird it didn't hurt it just felt like a like I was getting shocked I don't know, it was really weird, but everything went fine. It ended up working perfectly. That was the other thing. I know I've heard horror stories of epidurals not working, and that's what I was worried about too, but mine worked perfectly. It was awesome, and it was such a cool feeling, you guys. Like, I remember telling Jesse, like, this is freaking awesome. Now, I could still, like, wiggle my toes. I could still lift my legs. It was very hard, but, you know, I wasn't completely immobile from the waist down, and I guess that's different with everybody, but they kept having me turn side to side and everything like that, because I guess if you lay on one side too long, the epidural will only administer to one side, so you have to kind of flip back and forth to make sure it stays even on both sides and I was able to kind of lift my butt up and turn the nurse helped me but like I said I wasn't completely immobile but it was weird like I couldn't feel my skin if that made any sense but I could feel I don't know it was just a weird cool awesome feeling it was just really cool so at that point it was about seven o'clock and it was great I was like oh we're back in vacation mode and they started me on the Pitocin right after the epidural. And the plan was for my doctor to come in at about eight and break my water to get things progressed. But when she came in at eight and checked me, I still was only at two centimeters. So she wanted to hold off breaking the water and she was gonna check again at lunchtime because once they break the water, bacteria and things like that are can get into the womb and affect the baby or you have more chance of that happening. So I was really, really glad she was like, ah, let's wait till about noon and we'll check you again. So by this time I hadn't slept in over 24 hours. That was the other reason I wanted the epidural too is it's like, holy cow, I'm gonna be tired. I'm not gonna have the stamina to mentally deal with this pain and battle this pain you know what I mean and I have to say I was really disappointed in myself I was like gosh like I'd like to think I'm a you know tough girl and you know I have ever since I was little had a higher pain tolerance and I was just like gosh what a pansy I can't believe I tapped out but I'm so glad I did so again go into it being open-minded guys because that was the best decision I made so anyways at this point I was kind of wanting to try to take a nap but Penelope's heart rate started dropping and you could kind of hear it too so once that happened the nurse came in she's like hey her heart rate's dropping a little bit which we had the best nurse I don't want to say her name just for privacy purposes but she was seriously the sweetest I had the best nurse I have the best doctor she's freaking awesome and that really made this whole thing but she was just I literally couldn't have pictured a better nurse she was an angel she was so perfect so attentive just oh like she was just the best so that helped a lot too but anyways so she brought, came in and put me on the oxygen to try to get Penelope's heart rate back up and at that point it just kept dipping and dipping and so I couldn't sleep because I could hear her on the monitor and I could hear it start going slower and then I'd be like oh gosh it's dropping and then the nurse would come in and we would try little things to get her heart rate back up so at that point I was like I can't sleep like I was like kind of getting a little worried I wasn't freaking out because I was like well you know I'm gonna just trust the nurse I'm gonna trust the doctors and if something happens they'll know what to do like I I don't want to stress because that would just make things worse so anyways by 11 15 they had checked me and I was at four centimeters and then my doctor came in and broke my water at about one o'clock and so when she came in to break my water I was at eight centimeters so things were kind of progressing pretty fast at that point 
and I didn't feel her break my water. I didn't feel anything. One funny thing that happened is, so literally you don't have control over your, from the waist down really, like on the inside, your insides. They did have to put a catheter in, which I didn't feel that at all. And it was funny at one point the nurse was like, oh, you're peeing. And I'm like, I am? Like I could not feel it, it was so weird. And then at another point, <laughs> I farted you guys and it was loud and Jesse was like what was that and I swear I had no control over it and I kept feeling like I was pooping oh I want to say that too so the cytotech made me have crazy diarrhea I that was also kind of rough too where I was having really bad contractions and diarrhea it was awful like I know that's kind of gross in TMI but nobody ever like I never hear anyone talk about that that they get diarrhea in labor so that's a thing beware of diarrhea and your butt will be on fire from wiping it so many times but anyway so I kept feeling like I was pooping like poop was coming out and I would tell Jesse can you check I think I pooped and he's like no there's nothing there and I kept falling Farting, like literally had no control over it one thing I totally forgot to cover in this whole video and my friend reminded me the other day she asked me if this happened but I actually did not poop while giving birth I figured since we're talking about that I would insert it here but I think <laughs> honestly having the diarrhea beforehand helped kind of clean me out because oh, I guess I did not poop at all which I heard everybody does and I was full-on expecting it that was I remember when I first got pregnant I was like oh my gosh I do not want to poop but by the time I was there I was like I don't even care it's gonna be part of birth I was so comfortable with my doctor and nurse that I was like, ah, whatever, I don't care, that's part of birth. But it actually didn't happen, so yeah, if you end up having diarrhea, that might be a little golden light at the end of the tunnel is that you'll be all cleaned out by the time you actually push. And then at one point, the nurse checked me and I queefed and I did not feel it. I think it was a queef, I don't think it was a fart, but I laughed and I, it was so funny. Anyways, I know that's probably TMI, but, so anyways, by one o'clock my water was broken and I was eight centimeters and by two o'clock they checked me again. So literally 50 minutes later, I was at 10 centimeters. And that's one thing again that the epidural was nice because I was excited. If I didn't have the epidural, I would have been terrified to push. I would have, you know, but no, when they said you're 10 centimeters, you're gonna have a baby. I was like, oh, I was so excited. I was just so excited. And so I was kind of cute. All my family came in and took turns and I got to just talk to everyone right before while we were waiting for my doctor to get there and it was just such a cool experience <laughs> another funny story it was so funny so my dad um, came in when she was kind of checking me so my my stuff was all out you know and he just walked in the door and the nurse was like oh no no she's not covered yet and my dad was like oh I've wiped that and seen that vagina <laughs> And it was just so funny. That's totally my dad. But yeah, so it was just a really cool experience to just kind of see everyone right before and talk to everyone. And everyone was like, are you okay? And I'm like, no, I'm good. I'm ready to go. I was so excited. Then my doctor came in and she's like, let's do some practice pushes. So I did three pushes and then that contraction was over. And at this point, I could feel the contractions. Everyone says this and it's so true. Like I could feel light pressure. I could feel a little cramping, but it was very, 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 very light. Like hardly anything. So I could feel when it was time to push. And if you saw in my birth vlog, you'll see me asking her, am I having one? And she would kind of feel, cause I guess I felt the contractions before she could physically feel it on my stomach. And so yeah, I knew when contractions were coming. So we did one set of pushes, you know, three pushes, and then that contraction was over. And then I was having another one and she had me do one more push. And then she was like, all right, let's stop there. And that's when she called in um, one more tech to kind of put up the backsplash and everything like that. And she, that's when she got her, you know, stuff on. And it was really cool. The only people who were there, it was just, Jesse was holding one leg, my awesome nurse was holding the other, the doctor was there, and then that's when they called in the other tech lady. She was the one who helped put the baby on my chest. And it was cool, my doctor was such a boss. She was just like, cause I guess they usually have more people. She's like, nah, I can do it by myself. Like she's such a boss, it was awesome. So it took about 10 minutes or so 
for that tech to come in and at that point you know we were just talking and laughing and she didn't want me to push anymore until that other tech got there and so when she got there I did another set of pushes so one for 10 seconds two for 10 seconds and then three for 10 seconds and after that one I was like and you can hear me say this too as I said it feels warm and it's funny my doctor was like warm and I was like it doesn't hurt but I just feel warm in my vagina and she was like oh okay and Jesse said that's when I ripped so I did rip I only ripped one degree and then I had another tear in my labia I guess but yeah I really didn't feel it it felt warm but it didn't hurt then I did two more sets of four pushes so push one two three four and then another one one two three four and then on the very next set so technically at that point it was like my fifth set pushing she came out the first one it was so cool and I only was pushing guys for like 20 minutes and that was including that 10 minute break where they were waiting for the other tech to come in so really I was only actively pushing for about 10 minutes it was awesome like it honestly it couldn't have gone any smoother it was just amazing and when I saw her I was just like I like kind of saw her head and I was like oh I you, you saw I just bursted into tears and I couldn't control myself and I was just so happy and oh my god she came out and she was crying and I was like oh good because I had heard you know you want the baby to cry because it helps clear their lungs and so they had put her they hadn't put her on my chest yet they were kind of just wiping her down but I could see her and it was just oh my god you guys it I like I know everybody says this but it really was the most amazing thing I've ever experienced in my entire life it oh my god I was just crying and she was just so sweet and I just I don't know I'm gonna like start tearing up <laughs> but then when they put her on my chest she stopped crying and she was just looking at me and I got kind of worried at first I asked I was like is it okay that she's not crying because I, I thought they were supposed to cry the whole time and they're like no not necessarily she's okay her vitals are good so I was like all right and she was just looking at me and oh my gosh she was just so sweet if you guys know Jesse and I have had a long journey we've had three miscarriages and I just was in disbelief I kept I felt like I was having a really good dream and then I was gonna wake up and you know be like oh I guess that was a dream but it, it was just amazing and it was so cute so when she was in my belly Jesse would cup his hands and say penny girl it's daddy and she would kick all every single time almost in my belly and so Jesse kind of peeked over and he said penny girl it's daddy and it was the cutest thing you guys her eyes went back and she looked at him she was just so aware and even the nurses were like oh my gosh she is so aware which is funny because when she was in my belly all the nurses said that too it was really weird when they were listening to her hearts anytime we said we talked about her like oh you know her heart needs to come up a little bit boom 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 like anytime someone would talk about her she would move she, it was just so weird the whole time she's always been so aware which sounds weird but it's just too, happened too many times where it's not a coincidence, you know, and oh, it was just, she was so sweet and I just held her and did chest to chest or skin to skin and they let me do that for a solid hour, which was awesome and oh yeah, and Jesse cut the umbilical cord, so I forgot to say that. Oh, and I forgot to tell you too is another thing people talked about is delivering the placenta that, oh, that was awful and and I don't even remember it. Like, I guess she pulled it out. She did my stitches. They were pressing on my stomach, which that's another thing I had heard too. Like, it hurts so bad when they press on your stomach and stuff. And they were doing that, but it wasn't painful to me. It wasn't a big deal. Maybe it was the epidural. Like I said, the epidural worked really well. So I didn't feel a thing. I didn't feel her stitching. Or maybe I was just so distracted with her. I don't know, but I don't remember anything other than holding her. And she was such a good baby, you guys. She didn't cry that whole time. She latched on for a little bit. And then they, after an hour, they took her to get her measurements and weigh her. She didn't cry the entire time, except when they gave her shots. But oh, she was just such a good baby. And it was just such a great experience. So yeah, that's my birth story. Like I said, I wish I had filmed this closer to right after because I feel like there are so many things I forgot, but it was just such a pleasant experience from beginning to end, the whole thing. Even, you know, 
there was a some hours where I was in a lot of pain it's still like Jesse was so sweet he was there coaching me it was such a good experience to have together and I mean he had gotten me through the miscarriages which a couple of those were really painful physically and to just have an experience with pain and then have something exciting come out of it and just oh it was just such a good experience so anyways i know this video is so long you guys know i blab on forever but thank you so much for taking some time out of your day to watch this hopefully you got some inspiration or this put you at ease if you're worried about giving birth because it totally can be good and peaceful you know and happy so yeah other than that guys i will catch you in my next video oh and Hit that subscribe button if you got to the end of this video and are not yet part of my family. I do all kinds of fun videos and yeah, okay, I'll let you guys go for reals.